Hi, I'm uh, William Marr, the uh, University Archivist and Director of the Archives at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and I'm here at uh, WIPO in Geneva representing the Society of American Archivists during this week's uh, Standing Committee of Copyright and Related Rights session number 28. Uh, the reason I came to Geneva is to be able to be present for the discussions of uh, li limitations and exceptions in copyright for libraries and archives. Um, in the current digital era, when doing virtually anything in the archival world involves making copies and multiple copies, even just to capture the hard drive of an individual when they pass away, in inevitably involves making multiple copies of content that you don't even know what's there, uh, but you do have to preserve it right away. You're inevitably involved in uh, confronting copyright barriers or regulations and rules in copyright law that you could be violating for perfectly legitimate professional reasons. Uh, mission central reasons for an archivist. Who, the role of the archivist, of course, is to select the material of enduring value uh, that can be used for the public uh, research purposes. And uh, in order to do those things, you have to be able to acquire it. You have to be able to preserve it, you index it, and, and, and so forth, sometimes of which involves creating additional copies and such. And then you have to promote its use. One of the unique character, uh, the uh, defining characteristics of archives is that they contain uh, large quantities of material that's truly unique. That is, that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. When you're presiding over material that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, it is um, by definition apparent that the entire world is your audience, and where that then becomes relevant for the current discussions at WIPO is that. If people from a country in Africa or Asia or Latin America or Europe want to use materials in your collection and you're going to need to be make copies for them and transmit those copies across border, you're dealing in situations where your own country's law may not answer all the questions. And in the current environment, as studies have shown, while libraries and archives exceptions exist in a number of countries throughout the world, they don't exist in all countries, and where they do exist, they're not consistent from one to the other. What this creates is a very gray territory for archivists to be working in, and that uncertainty of what you're working with then becomes a problem that delays what you can do, inhibits you from doing things such as digitizing collections even of material, for example, relating to the partitioning of the Palestine after World War I. Um, uh, facing the 100th anniversary of World War I, these kinds of topics are of interest to people throughout the world. And for those of us at an institution like Illinois, where we have collections that show the ethnic basis for some of the territorial lines that were drawn, know with some certainty that we, when we are acting for the public good purposes that archives exist, that we can be doing so with confidence that we won't be violating copyright right and left and potentially be prosecuted. So it's for that reason that uh, we're here to try to add our voice to the voice of librarians and other uh, um, civic society uh, organizations uh, that there is a global value in the information that's in American libraries and archives as well as there's the global value in the archives that exist throughout the world and we need to be able to facilitate that into the digital era.